Gordon, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for yeah, having me. You know, absolute pleasure. First off, I have to ask you because they're one of my favourite animals in the entire world and you got so, so close to them and researching you, I saw this photo right here. Polar bears. Yeah. The greatest selfie in the entire world. Never mind Ellen at the Oscars. That is the greatest yeah, selfie ever. That's what closer is happening you there? ideally want to be. Um, we were filming polar bears in the Arctic and they are one of the few animals on the planet that, that see human beings as food. Not every single bear, okay. but they will see people and, and think this is something that could be on the menu. So we wanted a way of actually being out in the Arctic, close to the bears, but be completely safe. Um, so we had this polar bear proof, or we hoped to be polar bear proof <laughs> box that I could sit in and film and see everything that was going around me, but stay completely safe. Even though you are, I guess, you, well, you think you are completely safe uh, with that barrier and all that sort of stuff, is there still moments in that sort of situation where you are scared? Yeah, the whole entire time. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's because it's, it's a prototype, so it's not, mm. you know, if you do anything that's slightly dangerous, you know, well, it, it, this guy did it, did it before and he was fine, or, but in this situation, no one had ever done that before and and you know I, I we had filmed lots of bears using that and they completely ignored it it was just that one female that really checked it she out she just likes she, to look yeah, at it did she yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what are the specific skills that um would mark out a good wildlife filmmaker it's funny because a lot of people still, when they find out what i do they say you must be incredibly patient but mm -hmm. i don't think it's not so much about patience it's about Optimism. I think you've just got to be really optimistic because you have to sit and wait for a very long time. Yeah. Sometimes with not much going on. Um, but you need, to, yeah, you need to be How patient. How do you motivate yourself to keep going? It's like something will appear. So yeah. It will happen. It will come. I suppose when it comes to wildlife, you kind of you know that it's a little kind of moment that no one else in the world has. Is, is ever going to see yeah. so what you know the motivation is to try and capture that so you can show it to to other people and um it's just a numbers game if you if you wait long enough you will see something and what is the longest you've waited oh <laughs> i mean months uh, well really uh, uh, ch filming chimpanzees right at the start of my career we did a month dawn till dusk waiting for these chimpanzees to show up yeah and, um, they're and not, that was tough that was really they're not chimpanzees hard. but we do have uh, a clip of those tedious moments just off the track. This is probably the kind of upper end of a leopard scat, kind of lower end of a tiger scat. It could be either, but it is definitely from a big cat. And we are, camp is just on the other side of the trees there. Gordon hopes tiger prey will be drawn out of the forest and tigers won't be far behind. All he has to do is sit in his hide and wait. At the back of my mind, I was only hoping that I might just get back. I remember that bit. <laughs> do you start to talk to yourself, do you? Uh, yeah, and particularly I, as I noticed that like, I was completely unaware, as soon as I enter a tent or like, a hide, yeah. I start singing. I think it's maybe just trying to get the kind of... What are your motivation. karaoke songs of choice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. I don't think it was one of my own. You might scare uh, away the tigers. Yeah. <laughs> but that is, of course, from Los Angeles, the tigers. So tell us why that journey itself was so special and so significant. Um, before we went to Bhutan to look for tigers living at altitude, um, I'd spent a lot of time in India filming tigers mm -hmm. and I'd seen populations decimated, wiped out because of poaching. Uh, and I really thought tigers don't stand a chance of surviving into the future kind of with these little isolated populations. So really the, kind of, the idea was to, to try and find an area where tigers can live um, without the problems that you face in, in sort of mm. more human populations. So the idea was that across the Himalayas there could be tigers living right up there in the mountains, but no one really knew. So you kind so of we, go there with blind faith yeah. and you could come home empty handed. Well there was some, we had heard that was local people had said that they had seen tigers yeah. living up there, but it was like higher than you know any scientists had said that they, they could live. So mm. we just went out and blitzed the ho a huge But you did area. find them and you got yeah. very emotional as well at the yeah. same time. So that, what was it just, I guess, that huge, flooded those tears? I think just a huge relief, you know, well, one, because it's a whole team of people working incredibly hard with, you know, that op the optimism I was talking about was sort of beginning to flag. You yeah. know, we just haven't, we've been here for seven weeks and we haven't seen a single tiger. But also just kind of relief that this is a place that's not maybe 
perfect tiger habitat, but it's a place where they can actually stand a chance of surviving into the future. There's no guarantees, but it, there's a big area there that because they can Because you are kind of getting so close to these animals, do you ever kind of form a bond with them and um, find it difficult to say goodbye? Because I know we've got this photo of you uh, with, uh, what is it? what type of bear is this? It's a black bear. It is so cute, but I'm sure it would rip me to shreds. <laughs> no, we were just at the cinema. I've got my bag of, bag of popcorn there. It kind of looks like he's like, hey guys, just um, chilling with my friends. I mean, the majority of the time, you know, I'm there as a, ideally as an unseen mm -hmm. observer, but the types of programs I've been doing more recently is where you've got an opportunity to build a relationship with an animal to reveal more about their lives. So yeah. most of them it's scientific projects. So this was a scientist that had habituated bears to study them in the in the wild. Um, mm -hmm. So the deal was that for a, you give them a handful of food and then they'll let you follow them for the rest of the rest of the day. So he was like an enormous black bear, but he, they're, they're just it's the most so timid adorable. and gentle. Well, this is just like a flash of the amount of stories that you can tell and that you are going to tell on your yeah. tour. I have a piece of paper here with all the dates, but I don't know where it's gone. I think I've dropped it somewhere. But we will put them all up on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash tube TV. Thank you so much for coming You're in very to welcome. us. And uh, yeah, I will definitely be there to, to hear more stories. Thank you very much. You so much. Uh, if you uh, watch today's show and you think, oh my God, I could do such a better job than that guy, uh, then check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash tube TV, because Orti is creating a new show called Swipe TV. And in January, it could be you that's on it. We'll see you guys tomorrow.